Hey, everybody, this is Frank over at the Cave down in Sarasota, Florida, and we're continuing on with our uh, coach interviews who, with the people who, in my opinion, are some of the very best coaches that you're going to find anywhere. And uh, a lot of times the best coaches, you're not going to see big ads, all kind of hype and smoke and mirror stuff going on with these guys, so they're about doing what gets results. So we got on the line today from uh, – Strong Island, Big Dave Lemanzik. How you doing there, Coach? Wow, what a reception. I'm, d- I'm doing great, Frank. Uh, I'm very thankful to be on the line with you today. And uh, I'm also very grateful for the way you introduced me as well. So I'd like to uh, express my gratuity to you now. Um, but I'm doing great. Uh, Strong Island is, uh, we're trying to get them stronger. You know, we're, uh, <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> I tell you, judging from some of the videos I see you put out there, yeah, you're definitely doing it. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of the video stuff, uh, and and just for the listeners here, uh, I like to put the videos up to to make sure that people know that you know I'm not only an academic, but I'm also a, a physical culturist, just like you, Frank. And it's important that we as teachers also do the work that we ask our students to do. That's a great point. It's leading from the front for sure. Right. So now you're uh, you're an educator by profession, and uh, what what is your uh, your field that uh, you teach? Uh, yes, sir. I'm a licensed educator. I teach health education and I teach physical education. Um, on top of the training business I have, and it's uh, it's a perfect fit. It's it's a complete symbiont fit. Everything flows and rolls over to the next, and uh, I, I couldn't be happier doing what I'm doing. Oh, that's excellent. It, um, it kind of reminds me of how uh, Zach Evans kind of got his got his uh, start, you know, in the education field and then transitioning into uh, more of his own strength thing as time went on. But, right, yeah. right, exactly. Uh, we all kind of. We gravitate towards uh, a certain general area that we we believe we fit, and once in those areas, uh, things start to become more specific uh, as we recognize our own personal talents. And uh, as you mentioned, leading from the front, uh, that puts me in a <clears throat> in direct line to prove my kinesthetic uh, awareness that that I can that I can demonstrate. I know where I am, and I know what I can do. And that way, my students, uh, in turn, also know what to do. But you know that um, you know living it out day by day is such a rarity in our in our culture because well, I won't even go there. Would that take us two hours? <laughs> that. But uh, you know, I watch some of your workouts, and you do some amazing things with the kegs. You also lift some uh, humongous stones there, bro. You got some, uh, some big natural stones in your garage that you work out with. Yeah, thanks for watching, Frank. Uh, yeah, I have them all over my property. I have a stone quarry that's near me. and um, <laughs> That's great. So what I do is I, I go down to the quarry, and uh, I, I would say I go two or three times a year, and I, I pick up the boulders uh, on the hill and basically test them out on site then put them in the back seat of my car, drive them home, take them out, and I just scatter them around. And um, I have 17 natural stones, and uh, I do a lot of work with those. I also have uh, concrete stones that I've poured, sanded, polished, and they're pretty nice too, but they just don't have the same feel. But anyhow, the, uh, the stones, I love them. Um, the kegs, love those too. Uh, going into the kegs... Uh, and if you don't mind, I go into this. Would that be oh, all right? Please I... No, please. People need to know more about what you're doing up there. Okay, thank you. The uh, the stones are set. I, I can't take a 411 pound granite stone and, and ask him to shed 30 pounds. He's he's what he is. And when we talk about the kegs, the uh, let's say the the common half keg is 30 pounds empty, and once one knows how to open it up safely. Uh, then what you have is you have a cylinder that you can use um, in any way you want in terms of resistance. Uh, if you fill it up with water, you're looking at about 159 pounds. And if you're going sand, you're looking at about 230 to 235 pounds. So with those type of weight, 
uh, weighted resistance and a shifting resistance is what it would be, as you know from doing the work, you can be really creative in, uh, in your approach. Now, my approach with the kegs has traditionally been basic exercises, uh, things like things that can be done with uh, stones or, or barbells or, or, any, or any other resistance, but we'll stick with a, a basic deadlift or a squat or an overhead press or a standing forward shove, which I call the power press, or a lunge that I'll only do with a keg that's empty because the shifting resistance um, really tends to be more of a risk than benefit uh, for what I like to teach the guys. Bear hug carries are excellent, and there are a host of other exercises as well, like cheat curls are are one of the most underrated exercises uh, with a water keg just because it, it goes everywhere. And it's a real challenge. Um, and again, all you need is an empty keg, which is a cylinder. You open it up safely. And then if you have a hose or if you don't have a hose and you like to put some water in there, go ahead and put some water in there. And uh, the best way that I've found for people on the outside that aren't on the island that can't work with me directly to make progress with a keg is to add one pint of water at a time. A pint of water is one pound. And if you go through a workout, let's say you pick four or five exercises, you do it with the keg, you do them until muscular failure, um, then the next time you come back you want to do it again, you get a pint. One pound does not seem like that much at all. But when you go through the course of, of time, and again, making time work for you is another thing that's being lost in the shuffle. I have all the time I need, you know, and, and I can make it work. And when you have that perspective, then you can add a pint here and there. Whether it's, you know, you want to do a keg workout today, you want to lift some stones tomorrow, you want to do some body weight exercises the next day, maybe you want to mix in some, uh, you know, some power lifts, possibly some Olympic lifts. And then when you come back to the keg work and you add that pint, you would never know the difference. And over time and over the course of a lifetime, what started out as an empty keg with one pound of water in it, all of a sudden becomes a full keg, 159 pounds of water, or let's say 230 pounds, 235 pounds filled with sand. And when you can see a person pick up a keg, cheat curl it, and then power press it out in front of them, and then put it back down under control, and that's a full 159-pound half keg, that's a person who, from top to bottom, has built physicality, without weakness and it might not show up in a powerlifting competition or a strongman competition or even on the bodybuilding stage but it's something that the person can feel and he knows he has strength in his hands and on two feet and that's that's been some of the things that I've been trying to instill uh, with the physical aspect of using the kegs with progressive overload using the pints uh, in the keg conditioning program I developed, I advocated uh, going gallon by gallon because I would uh, assume, and I may have been wrong to do this, that most people would like uh, to reach the top of the, or to reach the apex of the program quicker. Like most people would want to have 15 workouts um, to go from empty to full as opposed to, um, let's say, 120 workouts. So it just depends on what somebody wants to do, how quick they want to get there, how much they're willing to give up to get some. There's always a trade-off, and balance is a big part of that. Um, So that's what I've been doing with the kegs. And with the stones, I think the best thing that I do with them is lift and carry. So to date, uh, my best is I have a a a 345-pound granite stone that's shaped like an arrowhead, and I've carried it for 88 yards. And at a body weight of 242, it's the best I can do. I wish I was stronger, but I'm not, and I'm going to keep trying to get stronger to get that 100 yards. But, uh, you know, maybe I just need a little hard work, and i got to man up a little bit, and that's me. Uh, No excuses, leading from the front. And, uh, you know, hopefully that explains uh, what I've been doing here with the keg work and how I've been incorporating the stones as well. Did that, did that answer your question, Frank? Yeah, that sure does. That's, um, that's, that's some pretty impressive carry, though, <laughs> regardless. I know you want to get more, but that's, uh, that's a fair amount of very hard work there. 
Right, I and I, I appreciate you recognizing that. It hurts, and, you know, when the, the people see the bruises and the abrasions, and, you know, uh, usually what I get, Frank, is people will look at me and they'll, they'll say, I, I thought you'd be bigger. And what I usually say is, yeah, me too. <laughs> but then we get down to, you know, training, and I, I love training, so anybody can come by if they're on the island and they want to work hard. You, you can come by, and uh, when you look at me and say, man, I thought you'd be bigger, and then we go down and it's time to lift three and 400-pound stones and take them for a walk, um, a great many people fail mentally because uh, they put their hands underneath the big stones and they say, oh, no. But really, it's an oh, yes. And you have to believe in yourself from the depths of who you are that anything you want to attempt can be done. And once that indomitable will mindset is ingrained, and I know you know all about that, you will not uh, defeat yourself before any moment. You, know, you go into it knowing you can succeed because everything you've done leading up to that point has prepared you. All the training, all the mental rigidity exercises, all the life experience, uh, everything prepares you to succeed in training. And whether it's a, a strongman competition like you guys had just gone, um, was it Tampa Bay? It was, uh, yeah, they started, it actually started late, like 5 p.m., and they ran until like after midnight. It was quite a unusual setup, but it was had bad weather in the morning and lots and lots of rain, and it was all outdoors, of course, so. Wow, it's a tough day. Everybody loved it, man. Everybody loved it. They all beat, but they loved it. And you know what? How great is the camaraderie in the, in those situations? Isn't it amazing? Uh, it is. It really is. It's a, it's a whole other world that uh, you know, you know, most people will never uh, be part of by their own choice. Um, it's just a, it, it is great. You know, I look at the, some of the people I've seen you associating with up on your. Uh, web page and stuff like that and you know you got quite the unique circle of uh very strong and powerful men that uh that you train with and uh right yeah it's very impressive man <laughs> very impressive well, yeah it's it's like we're we're speaking today uh the, the way i think of it frank is even though we're thousands of miles apart the universe is always going to bring bring like-minded people together uh and it doesn't matter what uh, like I said, what time or space separates anybody because we all magnetically pull together. So, you know, whether it's uh, the guys that come over here, my friends, or whether it's us talking on the phone, we're all in unison together. So the good people find each other and, and share with each other, you know, and, and that's the important thing because if, if we can share our experiences and the positive information that we have, then the whole gets that much greater. And, uh, you know, in terms of teaching anything in general and learning, uh, that's, that's kind of what's helped me become a really good learner and a halfway decent teacher. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I like your humble attitude there, David. You'll be, you know, putting the emphasis on the learning. And uh, I, I thank you. I'm trying to remember if it was... I like to say who said the quote, but I can't remember. I think it was uh, the old cowboy philosopher, Will Rogers. Nice. Uh, what, what you learn after you know it all is what counts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, yeah, then stay in the learning curve, which you, which you obviously do, and um, and sharing your knowledge like you're doing today. And Yeah, it does. It does uh, most definitely make every, everybody stronger or better out of the whole the whole deal, and uh, you know, God knows our country needs stronger people, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. And and uh, it's it's in the learning that we can make progress. Uh, I forget what student asked me this, but this is years ago. He says, you know, uh, Mr. Lemanchek. I said, yeah. He says, uh, you, you know a lot. How do you, how do you know everything? And I, and I just looked at him, and I said, well, I think you need to take a step back a little bit. And uh, understand that I, I know a little bit, very little bit. I, I've done some things because I've had time and I've made time. Uh, but in, in terms of knowing everything, 
I don't know what you could possibly be talking about. And I was so confused because I could never understand how anybody would possibly think that somebody would have so much information that uh, it would outweigh everything else or even outweigh other people. Because the way I see it, everybody has knowledge. Uh, whether it's something that we find interesting or not, it's immaterial because everybody has the knowledge. Everybody has the ability to learn. And when you have the ability to learn and you know how to learn, then the things you have interest in, you can be much more receptive to those things. Like we love training, so we, we know how we learn. We are keen aesthetic learners. We also watch and learn. We also listen and learn. So you combine the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning styles, bring them all together at once, combine them with effort and a dominable will. Now we're creating that symbiotic circle so now everyone can follow that lead and then take off and make their own mark. So that's basically where it goes. The learning does not stop for those people who understand what improvement's all about. And when it does, I think uh, <clears throat> it's pretty sad because sometimes people go a little bit astray with selfishness and, uh, and negativity. And that happens because that's life and, you know, some people choose that path. But the positive people who do the work, who know how to learn, who keep spreading the information, they're the ones that essentially make the iron game what it should be. Very good point. Very good point. Thank you. You know, that's uh, that's quite a, a unified, uh, systematic approach you have there. You really have, you know, split the fine hairs on that. That's uh, well said. Thank Overall. you, Frank. Uh, <clears throat> I would just, I would, I would be, I would be performing a great disservice if I didn't make it very clear how thankful I am for uh, everyone who's working hard and honest. I mean, you, for example, are doing such tremendous work down there, and I've been following you for uh, a number, a number of years now to know that you're consistent and the approach is consistent and <clears throat> the people that are involved with you are doing well and they're making positive changes and they're consistent. So not only are you doing the work, but those who are studying with you are also learning and doing the work. And although I don't have access to who they're teaching, I know in my heart that the symbiotic circle is continuous. It's not stopping. And all the other guys who I consider high-integrity guys that are in the iron game, those guys as well are making contributions that I am extremely grateful for and I'm thankful to have the opportunity to learn from. Again, with the Internet, we, we have an amazing thing that we can all be connected, whereas if we did not have it, we, we might not know of each other. You know, so for that, I'm also thankful. So, uh, you know, as, from top to bottom, Frank, I'm, I'm just very thankful to be a part, play a part, and, um, you know, just acknowledge the fact that we're in a game that's much bigger than ourselves, and the fact that we're helping uh, ourselves and other people, it just puts us in a really positive position. Yeah, yeah. great, great focus. Great, uh, great uh, vision there. Thank you know, you. the uh, people that train with you, David, now, are you mainly training uh, athletes or do you train uh, any of the general public or do you just pretty much stick to small group or one-on-one -on -one, uh, training with your people? How do you normally go about uh, what you do? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, well, since 1997, I, I started individual training. And I did that through college. I mainly worked with athletes uh, who were looking to uh, enhance their on-field, on-court performance. Uh, I played college basketball and, and uh, a short stint in professional basketball. wasn't good enough to play longer. wasn't good enough to get more money, but I was good enough to get there. So make your argument on that. Make your opinion on that. <laughs> it was what it was. But uh, the athletes tend to find me, and I don't, market myself to be uh, someone that trains athletes. It's just kind of that's like how we found each other. The athletes find me. It's just that's, that's how it is. We find each other. Uh, I've have, I have done group work, and the group work I've done has been successful. However, and sorry, Long Island, 
but most of the people here aren't willing to work as hard as I want them to work. And what I demand out of my students is uh, an imperative amount of focus, which means when we're working, we're working. Uh, we're not worried about any external stimulus. No, there's no mirror in my gym. No, there's no TV. When you, sell, when you walk in, you turn your cell phone off. There's legitimate rules for a reason because I want the focus to be on improvement. Uh, so when I've been in the group setting and I did it for two and a half years, um, what I saw, Frank, with at least my work was it was a little bit of a lack of focus, and I am not willing to instruct those who aren't willing to give me their full attention. Um, so it might be kind of an extreme viewpoint, but in terms of getting results, uh, it absolutely works. So the group work for two and a half years, um, I would say it was definitely successful, but I'm looking for maximum focus. So I've actually gone back to private training, individuals, sometimes pairs, and most of those guys do happen to be athletes. Um, when they are done playing sports, they still come back. So it's kind of like once an athlete, always an athlete. Uh, there have been people who have not been athletic competitors that I have worked with, and we've done great things too. Um, so the, to, to really flip it around now, the stuff I do with the kegs and the stones, very few, if, if not none, of my athletes will train in that way. So that's kind of <laughs> got to make you think like, hmm, then what are you really doing up there? <laughs> well, it, it's kind of it kind of like this. If if you have like a Division One baseball player, for instance, that I worked with this morning, uh, because he's hitting and because he's throwing and because he's always running and he's always doing these things with skill work and, and the rigorous summer schedule that they compete with, lifting a stone or doing something uh, that let's say a, a typical person could do and have like two three days recovery before they have to go back and do it again. It's just it's just out of the equation because he's not going to be able to work. So how I train athletes is more through a, a dynamic fashion where I'll give you an example of a workout. We'll, we'll start with 10 minutes of jumping jacks. The average person, when I start them, can't even get through three minutes without stopping. So we'll go 10 minutes without stopping. Then we'll usually do about 300 yards of progressive resistance uh, diagonal traveling lunges. And then we'll, you know, usually it's a sip of water after that. Then we'll go right into uh, the fun. Now the fun... The, the real good stuff, what we've been doing lately, is I have a tire uh, that's about 170 pounds, and I drilled an eye bolt in it with a chain, and I, I can attach an army harness uh, to it. Now, it's a harness. I give a kid, let's say, a 75-pound sandbag to bear hug, and he has to pull the tire. And the distance course could be anywhere from a quarter mile up to a mile. It just depends on who the kid is, how tough he is. And I ask him the question, how hard do you want to work today? And generally, the guys will be, like, ready to go. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, throw some bottles of water in the tire. And I read the guy or the girl, and we do what we can do until it's done. And when it's done, we might get into some keg push-ups, and that's about it. That's the work. Uh, I like to combine a couple different things at the same time, uh, like the carry and the drag. And uh, it, it just ends up being something that, where I've had guys that have come in with, like, let's say, knee problem, shoulder problem, tweak this, tweak that, but they can do this work and feel fine. And they all say, after they're done, yes. And I'm like, you that happy? And they say, yeah. And I say, why? <laughs> they said, because I accomplished something today. And if somebody feels so accomplished, and you've seen this with all the guys you work with, if they feel accomplished, I mean, what more can you give to somebody? Because you've given them confidence in their own ability that they can persevere and push through something that if they saw it on paper, they might just be like, rip it up. Like, I don't know, man. I just don't know. But then they finish, and, you know, that's the culmination of all the teaching because now they've, they've done something that's just so much beyond what they originally thought they can do and they've proven it to themselves. And that means a lot. And uh, that's kind of what I focus on here. I, I combine things, and uh, I make it 
fun, that's sarcastic, but we focus on things like pain tolerance, indomitable will, reading the body, and if you were watching me train somebody, it would be like me speaking with you now. It would be a very relaxed approach, uh, just using the verbal cues that are only necessary to improve performance or clarify a point that needs to be made to make sure that the risk-to-benefit ratio in exercise is always at the benefit end. Uh, anytime anything gets a little uh, towards the risk end, uh, I'll just say out. And, uh, you know, everybody knows what that means. And uh, there's certainly been times, Frank, where I've had to carry a tire back a half mile from the gym myself uh, <laughs> yeah. while the guy's watching me. And, and that's when I ask him while I'm carrying, like, please, look at what I'm doing. Watch. Please use the cues. Tell me if I can improve. And I let them be the teacher. And then I can do the work, too, in front of them and, you know, prove my stability as a coach, as, as somebody who can also do the work and, and be someone that can be taught. So there's a lot of special things that uh, go on with uh, the teaching and training process up here. And I'm just thankful f to be a part, really. Uh, I'm just really grateful. That's excellent. It's, uh, you know, I like the uh, simplicity that you uh, incorporate which is usually where the, the uh, most effective stuff lies anyway. In, uh, but the the intensity and the duration of what you're doing there, that, that's, that's quite an approach with the, the 10 minutes of jumping jacks for, to start off with. That's great. Yeah, that's a separator. I'll tell you a good story. My brother, when he got done playing uh, minor league baseball, he got some crazy injuries, and, you know, it just it ended for him earlier than it should have, but he uh, he was going back to uh, to school for a master's degree, and uh, during that time he had to do an, uh, some kind of volunteer work with a college athletic team. So he called me up, you know, Dave, i got to do a warm-up for a Division One baseball team. i got uh, I got 10 minutes. What do you got? You got a bunch of exercises for me? I said, yeah, I, I got the best thing for you. He said, what? I go, put them all in a line, or better yet, put them all in a circle so they can face each other. You got a watch on you? He said, sure do. I said, good. Jumping jacks, 10 minutes, go. <laughs> and, yeah, he did what you did. He stopped laughing. He's like, nah, really, give me the warm-up. Where the dynamic stretches, where's everything? I'm like, no, that's it. I'm like, because they're going to prove to you that they're going to, if they're athletes, okay, then what they already have is the fascia, the muscle in the bottom of the foot, has been built up because they've established the cardiovascular fitness base both with long and short distances. So the bottom of the feet is not, not going to be an issue. Also, their cardiopulmonary health, their heart and lungs, are so used to the short and long distances, and they're, all, they're also used to the anaerobic and aerobic capacities through training, that 10 minutes is nothing for them. So this shouldn't be a big deal at all. I'll tell you what, he, go, he actually went ahead and did it, and I knew he did it because when I called him up, uh, yeah, I think he said he was doing it at 9 a.m. I called him at noon that day because he was working a camp after. And he was at lunch, and he was actually working a camp with my father, a local baseball camp. And, you know, I said, hey, how'd it go? And he goes, you wouldn't believe it. And I'm like, what? He goes, no one could make it past two minutes without stopping. Wow. And I was like, right. And that proves to you how effective it is. And I told him to give the guys the cue that if they can't do jumping jacks, just jog in place. And when you feel like you can do jumping jacks, do jumping jacks again. And, uh, you know, that was the cue he gave him. But, yeah, sure enough, two minutes, he's looking at everybody. You guys are standing. You guys are looking at their coach like, you know, is this, is this guy with the jumping jacks for real? This isn't jumping jack practice. You know, guys are getting upset. And if you know guys are getting upset, it's a direct reflection of their own, you know, negative fitness because we're not asking them to do a lot. Just ask me to jump in place, move your arms. That's it. So, you know, the, it was a great warm-up that I've used for my entire tenure as a, a teacher and a trainer, and I used to, and I'll pretty much never use anything else unless, of course, I have somebody that comes in with an injury and they can't do that, and in which case we find them an alternate uh, warm-up. But uh, it's, like you said, Frank, the, the most simple things are the most effective because they require effort, and they require somebody to point the finger at themselves instead of somebody else. Uh, you know, I, I think about what you spoke about earlier about the uh, indomitable will, indomitable spirit, how that ties in with those types of things right there, and, and uh, 
really separates the men from the boys early, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And how good do, how good would you feel knowing that the guy right next to you is not going to stop? The guy right next to you is someone that can be someone that can be depended on because when the tough gets going, he pushes through, and he understands that no matter what type of physical pain manifests itself, he will not stop until his job is done. And once that's understood, and once it's done by people, that's when the really special thing happens, and that's when you know the goals are reached, and that's when essentially everybody's happy and everybody understands. But it requires somebody going way outside their comfort zone in a, let's say, uh, highly beneficial, less riskful way uh, to get there. So you know, this that's the way. Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense. That um, wow, that, I'm making sense. That's great. <laughs> you make it. I'm looking for another <laughs> word. It's just, it just makes yeah. sense, you know, and that I guess that's what evades most people because, uh, you know, things that make sense for people who know how to make sense out of things are somewhat in short, the shorter supply these days, I think, and they want to overcomplicate things. And, right. Uh, and uh, well, you, yeah, you look yeah, at uh, you look at science, for example. Uh, it, it, there's so much that's unknown with with the human entity uh, compared to what's known. We really don't know a lot. Uh, but what we do know is what we can feel. And past the point of feel, there's something that takes over. Now, I've seen your workouts, Frank. I've seen how hard you work. I know that when you're working, let's say, with the sandbag carry, you posted a great, great sandbag circuit the other week. Uh, it was just awesome. I, I love watching it. I know you got tired. And I, I know you got to a point where you were like, ah, oh, this is brutal. And once you got past the point where you didn't feel the pain anymore, where you were just in that zone, something takes over. And whatever that something is, it's that something that we need to get in touch with because that's essentially what drives us. Now, I call it the indomitable will. Other people call it the witness. Other people call it the indomitable spirit. It doesn't matter. It's getting there. It's pushing yourself to the point in, in a very safe manner. Like, let's say, with the sandbag carry, it's perfect. You can carry that thing and set out and go for miles. And all you have to do if you feel any pain and it's negative is drop the bag. I've dropped 300-pound sandbags on my foot. All it's going to do is make it hard for me to get my foot out. Roll, roll the sandbag over, pull my foot out, and I'm fine. So when you can take a task that's simple and elongate it and make time work, uh, it really gives somebody a chance to work hard and develop the fortitude that it takes to push through tough times. And whatever's done in training is made relative to life. So a tough guy in training uh, can really be a tough person in life and somebody that can be counted on um, in all aspects. That, that's an excellent point. You know, I think about how uh, anybody who's investigated, uh, either been through special ops training or has read up on it, they always come to that point, always, about right. being able to, to go through that barrier and uh, multiple barriers and keep on going just well beyond what their body is able to do. And just, they just won't stop. They won't, they oh, won't yeah. stop. The breath in their body, they won't stop. And uh, that, no, you really hit the nail right on the head with that. And what you're saying you're with, saying, uh, uh, go ahead, Frank. I'm sorry. Oh no, that, that, that's quite right. I was, um, you know, I lost it. <laughs> you well, ahead. going into <laughs> going into the special ops, right? I, uh, <clears throat> I mean, you mentioned it. I have so much respect uh, for the men and women that can go through. Uh, with those programs, because uh, I've I trained one guy who failed selection twice, and uh, he was such a tough guy. I mean, tough, but he couldn't do a couple things right when he needed to, and that's a sem 
essentially what's going to separate you at the moment of truth because you have to be able to do two things really well from what I've gathered. It's focus and execute no matter what the situation is. And if you can do that under any circumstance, under any constraint, then you're going to be somebody who is special. And there is a specific reason why those people are in those positions to protect everyone else. They can focus. They can execute. Any constraint is a benefit to them or it's a challenge to overcome. And, uh, you know, the average person looking for a high level of fitness look no further than that. I mean, those people have demonstrated time and time again that they can do uh, the extraordinary. And, you know, hats off. They have my respect. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, I'm in definitely in agreement with you on that one. The, uh, Coach, what's, um, I'm going to have to wrap up here in a few minutes, but be, before sure. we sign off, I want to make sure we cover everything you'd like to cover today. Um, is there uh, certain resources that you put out that you were, I know, uh, your keg training system, which I uh, picked up a couple of years ago, which is really good. Thank um, you. Do you have any uh, any other things that you come out with that you'd like to let people know about, and uh, or also your website or however else they would get in touch with you? If you want to go ahead and uh, fill everybody in on that, that'd be great. Well, thanks for the support, Frank. I, I do remember you supporting keg conditioning. I remember mailing it to you myself. A lot of the things mm-hmm. I do myself because I like the personal approach. Uh, so I am very thankful for that. Thank you. Um, oh, in no terms problem. of my website, there's kegconditioning.com. Uh, feel free to write me at dave at kegconditioning.com. Uh, I also have basketballstrength.com that's geared towards athleticism. Uh, I've been told that it's actually the perfect training program for fighters, and I've had a lot of uh, sensei, sifus, and, and fight instructors purchase the program, much more so than basketball players, go figure. Uh, so that's where that is. Um, on YouTube, I have a channel that I'm just starting now that's going to be um, all tutorials. Uh, so it will be uh, 15, 20-minute video tutorials of me going through work and uh, just explaining how I teach the work. And that is on YouTube slash Universal Elemental. And what that is is that will be like a uh, virtual media library for some of the things we do up here in Long Island. And, uh, yeah, I know they call it Strong Island, but, you know, there's strong people everywhere. And uh, from what I've seen up here, and, again, sorry, Long Island, I feel like it's more of a superficial show. Uh, I've found found stronger people outside of this place because a lot of people seem to be uh, too excited about the look instead of what you can do. And I'm a do guy. If you can do and you want to do and you want to learn and you want to help me help you, we're in. And uh, I, I find that in places of less superficiality, we have that. Um, but anyhow, keg conditioning, basketball strength, YouTube, Universal Elemental, and that's it. And I'm very receptive um, to anything. So if, if anybody wants to contact me or has questions or, or comments or even would like to train, uh, my address is up on my website. Give me a call. Come by, and let's do it together. It'll be a great time. Uh, that's fantastic, there. I, I tell you, Coach, it's been uh, tremendous having you on the line, and um, I'm really glad that people out there are getting to know more about you and what you do, what your approach is, your strategy, and the kind of results you're getting for people and, um, and the simple fact that you two lead from the front. Uh, you know, we get to a true, truly dedicated, focused uh, approach to it. And I know you do the work. I know you get the results personally as well. And uh, I just want to thank you once again for uh, being on the interview today and uh, wish you the best of continued success up there. Frank, I'm very grateful to be in the op- be in the position and have the opportunity to help. Uh, and, and honestly, if, if there's anything I can do to help you, you, you don't have to ask. You can just pick up the phone and dial the line, and and I'm here to help. And uh, really, it's my pleasure. So thank you for helping me to be a part of a much bigger thing. Okay, well, I appreciate that, Coach. And uh, we'll sign off for now. And once the recording stops, I'll just talk to you for a minute, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there, okay? That'd be my pleasure, Frank.
Uh, okay. Everybody, this is Coach Dave Lemanzik. Uh You heard all his contact info. Definitely get it, get on his website and now his new YouTube channel and learn from this man. Okay, out for now from the cave. See you later, Coach. Thank you again. You got it, Frank.